Welcome to Believer's Night at Emmanuel Light of the World. Let's engage in time of worship and then the word by our pastor, Rakia Wright. We glorify your name, God. You are the great God. You are the mighty God today. Come on, let's worship him, y'all. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go.
pray. Father God, we just thank you for, um, first of all, for covering us. We thank you for protecting and keeping us, Lord God. And Father, we ask, Lord, that you would just continue to move amongst our, our country, Lord God, with everything that we are facing right now, Father, we know, Lord God, that you are the one, Lord God, that is able to bring change. You are able to change the hearts of men. You're able, Lord God, to change the temperature of our country right now, Father. And we thank you that you've given us the tools as believers, Father, to be able to pray, to be able to fast and intercede, Lord God, on behalf of our country. And Father, we just put those, those tools, we put those things to use in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you that we are not believers who would just sit and do nothing, but that we would rise up, Lord God, and just begin to, um, to, to pray and intercede, Lord God, on behalf of our country. And we believe, Lord God, that you are able to move in ways unimaginable. And Father, that you're able to bring a lasting change Lord God, to what we have struggled with and dealt with for years. Father, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Well, praise God. So I want us to go ahead and turn in our Bibles to the book of Ephesians. And we're going to look uh, this evening at the fourth chapter. The fourth chapter. And we're going to start at verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, just as you, also you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and one Father of all who is over and through and all who is in. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gifts. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led captive a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. Amen. I'm speaking to the church here. He has given us, he has graced us. He has given us grace, each and every one of us. And when we speak about grace, you know, he has given, he has apportioned, he has apportioned um, each one of us grace. Amen. We're saved by grace. Amen. It's not by works that we are saved. We are saved by grace. And so that's one gift that he gives us, the, the, the gift of, uh, of grace in which we are saved. That's one gift. But then there's also a gift that he, he gives us, which is called also called grace. And this grace is, is a special gift and ability and a talent or whatever for ministry that he's given to each and every believer. So he's given us a call. He's given us the Holy Spirit so that we can live in a way that is worthy of the call. But he's also given us a grace, which he's given each and every one of us a special gift, a special ability to minister in this world. Amen. I know what you're thinking. I don't have a I don't have a gift. I'm not. Uh, you know, if you are a believer, you have a gift that God has given to you. For this world, for to, to minister in the earth. And then he says in, in, in the scripture um, following that, he says in verse 11, and he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry to the building up the body of Christ. So when we're not receiving that we have a call as believers, when we're not receiving that we have been graced, when we are not receiving that we don't have, that we don't have a gift, amen, we're falling short from, from the call that God has given to us to equip the saints for the work of ministry. There's a work that the church has been called to do. There is a work as a believer that you have been called to do. He says, yes, I've given the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. I've given all of them the grace. I've given all of them the gift. I've given all of them the ability, watch this, and the responsibility as gifted leaders, as those who, has been, who have been called by God, those who have a high calling, I've given them a responsibility. 
And since every last one of us who are listening in on this on this message today, if you are a believer, since every last one of us have been gifted by God, has been graced by God, has been called by God, you have a responsibility. Say hallelujah. You have a responsibility. You know, if I were to give you a natural gift, if I were to give you a gift and put it in your hand and say, this is the gift that I am given to you. You have a responsibility, what? To use the gift. Because I might come back to you and say, hey, how, how you know, did you like the gift? Did you like the, you know, the gift that I gave you? Did you use it? Did you like how it worked? Right. So as I give you a gift, I don't give you a gift for you to put it on the shelf. I don't give you a gift to for you to allow it to collect dust. But he says, I've given you a gift. And with this gift that you have received, because when you became a believer, you received the gift. God, whatever it is that you want me to do, whatever it is that you've gifted me to do, I want to use this gift. You have taken responsibility as a gifted leader to use the gift that God has given you. And as a pastor, I'm a part of this fivefold ministry and I have a responsibility to use the gift. If I'm speaking to prophets right now, you have a responsibility to use the gift. If I'm speaking to apostles, you have a responsibility. If I'm speaking to pastors, you have a responsibility. If I'm speaking to teachers, you have a responsibility to use your gift. You see, this word equip that he used, he says, I've given some gifts as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the responsibility or for the use to equip the saints for the working of ministry. That word equip simply means it's more than just preparing the saints, but that word equip means to repair the saints. Amen. Amen. There's some repairing that needs to be done in the church. If the church was perfect the way that it is, then he would have never given the gifts and never given us the grace and never given us the high calling and never given us the Holy Spirit to empower us in these areas and to grow us up in these areas if there wasn't a work that still needed to be done on the church. There's a work and we can see that even more today. There's a work of unity that is needed. To equip means more than just prepare, it means to re, um, to prepare, it means to repair. That means there are some things that have been broken, there are some things that are not, you know, quite right. But but when when he gives gifts to men in these fivefold ministry, he's given us these gifts to equip the saints, to repair the saints, to to um to restore the saints, to perfect Affect the saints. There's a heavy responsibility. But we've been graced to do it. To prepare the saints for the working of ministry. Equipping indicates that, that our nets have been broken. And whenever you're trying to do something, uh, take, take, a, take a fisherman, for instance. If a fisherman was on a mission to gather fish and to catch fish, but his net is broken, he will be unsuccessful in the mission. We have a mission as the church today and what's going on in our country, what's going on in our world. We have always had a mission, but, but our mission is unsuccessful if our nets have not been mended. If we have not been in church to be equipped. We use the title of believer and of Christian, but 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 our life oftentimes does not reflect that of a disciple, that of a believer, that of one with a high calling. That of the one who has been equipped. Say hallelujah. Equip indicates that that the net has been broken. But as I am being equipped, what God is doing, what Holy Spirit is doing is he's mending the broken areas of my net so that when I go out on mission or uh, the, the great commission, 
in the earth when I go out to minister that I'm successful in doing what God has graced and called me to do. Equipping is setting the broken bones back in place. Amen. He's graced us to catch fish. He's graced us to, to be the light. He's graced us to be the, you know, to, to walk out our calling in a way that is worthy of the calling. But our nets need to be mended. There's spiritual growth that needs to take place. There's submission to the spirit that needs to take place. There's generations and children in, in our families that need to be disciple. Amen. So that when we're gone and it's all said and done and we're gone, we're leaving a generation of disciples who are living in a way that is worthy of the call in unity with the spirit. So that we can begin to see God move in such a way that he will hear the cry of his people in our time of need. You see, the church has been graced, but our nets have been in need of mending. And the responsibility is given to whom Christ has gifted to whom Christ has called. You see, our nets cannot be mended in our own works. I know that you don't want to feel the feeling that you have right now in your heart. I know that, 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 that this negative feeling that you have on the inside of you, that you don't want, you know, you're, you're trying to mend it. You're trying to, to, to fix this in your life. But God says, no, it's the Holy Spirit that does the fixing. As you yield to him, it's Holy Spirit that, that, that changes that hate and takes away that hardened heart that we have had for years to give us a heart that is tender and a heart that is receptive, a heart that is loving. See, we have, as God's people, we have a responsibility And that responsibility is to equip, but it's also to be equipped. Our responsibility as God's children is to do his work. Many of us have asked the question, well, what would Jesus do in this time? During the time that we're living in right now, what would Jesus be doing? We have a responsibility as his hands and his feet in the earth to do his work. But we want to be effective in doing his work. We want to be effective in ministry. We want God to grace us and to anoint us as we do the work. As we do the work of the ministry. As we've preached and taught this entire year about every Believer, every member of Emmanuel Light of the World being a minister. Maybe we haven't ministered in years past, but if there was ever a time for us to begin to minister, the time is now. Amen? How do I know that you've been called to minister? Well, it said it in the beginning of this passage that he's graced you that he's given you a high calling, that he's gifted each and every last one of us. And he's given us a responsibility. What is this thing that we're equipping the people to do? Some people say, well, I know that I'm called to equip. I know that I'm, I'm, I'm called to to, to equip. So it's not just, you know, uh, um, um, the fivefold ministry gifts. He said, I know that I'm called to equip, but, but what am I supposed to be equipping them in? Sometimes we're thinking that, okay, I'm going to equip you to, to usher. I'm going to equip you to, to greet at the door. And all of those things are great when we're inside of the building, but right now we're not inside of the building. 
And what the Lord began to show me, and this is so good, is that every believer must be equipped with the truth. With the truth. If we turn on the, 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 the radio, if we turn on the, the television, if we look at social media, people are feeding us a whole lot of stuff and it's stirring up emotions and things that we have yet to surrender to the Holy Spirit to do the work on the inside of us. But but it's stirring up a whole lot. But what what part of it is truth? What is true? See, the work of the, the, the ministry, the work of, of, of the fivefold ministry gift, the work of the church and us equipping for the work of, 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 of ministry is that we, we are equipping them and you all are being equipped with truth. I need somebody to get this today. For the purpose of working the ministry, we can't work the ministry on a lie. We can't work the ministry on what you, 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 you've been fed all your life that, that, that you've never done the, the research on your own to see if this is really truth. But you've been living by this, this truth. Just because you say that it's true does not mean that it's truth. Just because there are facts around it does not mean that it's truth. Amen. This is truth. Anything that lines up with the word of God is truth. But if we don't know the word of God, if we don't spend time in the word of God, if we don't study the word of God, we will not know the truth. We will settle for things that are, that are very close to the truth. We will settle for things that, that, that appear to be true. But because we don't know truth, will come into agreement with things that look like or seem like or closely relate to truth. But if it's contrary to the word of God, then it's not truth. He says, I want my people to be equipped. Get this to be equipped in truth. If you don't do nothing else, if, if you don't uh, go out there and, and walk the streets and, and protest or whatever it is and, and do all sorts of things, you know, if you don't do anything else, know the truth. He says, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. But many of us are in bondage in many areas of our lives. Why? Because we are living on a lie and not truth. So God says, I, I need my believers to mature in this. This is a season and a time. We, he has quarantined us. We're, we're, we're in our homes. We're in a place where we can focus on the word of God. God, what are you speaking? God, what are you saying? God, give me the truth. He says, I've sent the pastors, the teachers, the apostles, the prophets, and the pastors to deliver truth. Apostles give us the authoritative truth of God's word. Prophets give us the truth of God's spoken word. Pastors give us the truth. Pastors and teachers give us the truth of, of God's um, um, doctrinal word. Evangelists give us the, the truth in regards to God's evangelistic word. So all of these gifts that he's given us, we are to proclaim and to speak and to equip the saints with the truth of God's word. Amen. So that we could have, watch this, in, in, in verse uh, 12, I believe. It says, until we all attain unity, there's that word again, until we all attain unity of faith 
and in the knowledge of the son of God to mature to a mature man, to the measure of the stature, which belongs to the fullness of Christ. There's that word unity. So we're unified in the spirit by yielding to the work of the spirit on the inside of us that we can live in a way that is worthy of the call because we can't achieve those things without him. But we're equipped by the fivefold ministry. That's why we don't need to be detached from the church. We need to be a part and get this word of the church because that's where the, the fivefold ministry gifts are operating that we would receive the truth, but even receiving the truth on your own, open up this Bible on your own, receive the word of God, get his truth so that we can, he says, he says, this is something that is going to be continual. This is something that, that, that won't stop. This is a work and a job for the church to mature the saints so that we can work the ministry and watch this so that we can build up the church. Amen. So that we can be unified in faith. That means there's unity in what we believe that we can all stand on one accord, unified in the spirit, unified in faith. But if we don't have this word, if we don't know the truth, it, you know, we're going to be easily tossed to and fro. We won't be the light that, that needs to be shown in darkness. Amen. He says, my goal through this equipping, my goal through this equipping in the truth is so that we as a church can be unified in faith and unified um, and, and, and not just faith, but unified in the knowledge of the son of God. Amen. And unified in the spirit with the bond of peace. There's that unity. Why? Because he wants to begin to do a work in us. But the enemy works in discord. God works in unity. You can be different. You can have a, a different gifts. You can look different. You can do all of these things. But when we have one mission and one purpose, God says, I can work in that. He says the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, we're unified, but we have three distinct functions. But they're unified. Amen. They're unified on the truth. They're unified in faith. There's one baptism, one spirit, one faith, one father, one son, one. And if we can ever, as the body of Christ, just get to that place of maturity and 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 um in unity in faith unity in spirit, then we will be a force to be reckoned with. The church will be a force to be reckoned with. Amen? That the Holy Spirit would rid us of this anger and this hate and this whatever that is that's in our hearts. God cannot operate in that. We need the move of God in our country. But one thing I know that he moves where there is unity. Amen. Unity of spirit, especially. Oh, this is so good. Amen. You know what? I believe the reason why Dr. Martin Luther King was so successful was, yes, I believe that he had a high call on his life. And, but he lived in a way that it was worthy of the call. He lived in a way that was worthy of the call. He went forth with the word of God. He went forth in the spirit of God. No matter how much was coming against them, no matter how much was coming against him, he lived and the people who followed him came in unity with the spirit that was leading him. He was not led by, 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 the, by the devil. He was not led by his flesh. He was led by the spirit. Every word that proceeded out of his mouth was biblical. Was It lined up with the word of God. He was led by the word of God. 
And guess what? The power of God was able to come and make a difference. Amen? Let's not try to fight this battle without, without God, without the spirit of God. Dr. Martin Luther King, he says, he says, and I love this quote that he gives. He says, he says, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. He says, darkness cannot drive out darkness. I mean, listen to what is going on in social media. You know, you loot, we, we shoot and all this stuff. No, hate cannot drive out hate. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. But will we be the light that God has called us to be? Because we're allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work on the inside of us. Because if you're relying on your own strength and willpower, you're going to fail under pressure. But it's the work of the Holy Spirit bringing us to a place of unity in the spirit becoming one with him that we're really able to live in a way that is worthy of the call. So some may ask, well, what can I do right now? I have a young boy who's growing up in this society, you know, and I'm saying, what can I do right now with the young men that we are raising, that our fathers are raising that this, you know, what can we do? For one, we can live in a way and be examples of living in a way that is worthy of the call, live in a way that is submitted to the spirit, living in a way that is being equipped to do ministry effectively, living in such a way that, that, that is unified in faith, but not just living in that way, but teaching and discipling our children to live in that way. Because when we're dead and gone, we still have a generation that is coming up behind us and we want this, the power and the spirit of God to be with them. But it starts with us ministering and discipling and being the example that they can see. Amen. So that they too can be the light in this dark world. I know I've, I've gone on for, for longer than I wanted to. Amen. And there's still more, so much more in this passage that I want to share. Amen. With you all. And so next week we'll we'll finish up, we'll we'll continue with this passage, and I believe that this is truly going to be a blessing to you. Amen. May you have a blessed night. Enjoy your family. And uh, let's get unified in the spirit and be committed to the call.